day 11, I'm in the middle of editing this video, but I think I'm going to just put the looms that I made for these prospects at the beginning of the video so you guys can see them first and have context before my uh, YAP marathon. Hey, thanks for checking this out. So I have your website pulled up right here, and if we scroll down a little bit, you see that the first way to contact you guys is through this very small button that's hidden behind a bunch of text. Um, I don't think that's ideal. Um, so over here we have kind of what a new website could look like and obviously we can subtract and add to this in any way possible change literally everything But the idea is that this website is designed to be highly functional for people who are comparing multiple options and skimming things And maybe they're on their phone while driving and they just need what they need really quick So we have a bunch of very big buttons with the core reasons why you would want to go on a dentist website in the first place and then you have all of the biggest pain points down here, which Again, we can totally adjust to your to your purposes, um, but this is all based on real insights we've collected from all over the internet. These are like 25 examples of exact quotes of why people choose one dentist over the other. And then we've boiled all of our research down into kind of the core reasons um, people are concerned or the core things that add friction to somebody starting to work with a dentist. So. Um, if you are into this and you want to talk more about how we can help totally streamline and, and modernize your, your web presence and optimize it for getting as many new, uh, new patients as possible, totally let me know. I'd love to work with you. All right, everyone, day 11. Let's start this one with some chat GPT sauce, shall we? So I used the GPT-5 thinking model, which I believe is only part of the pro and plus plans, um, but I told it to search for the highest impact thing that causes people to choose a dentist over another. Um, looking for insights, which obviously incredibly useful to a marketer to get a wide array of customer insights. Now its original output was a little more vague than I would hope for. Some of these are just kind of snippets from reviews, it seems like, um, although all of them are sourced from Reddit. Um, so I corrected it and I just said, look, you're gonna have to try that one again, buddy. These are kind of just reviews. I want insights to why someone would choose one over the other. I want to hear this versus this rather than just this is good, right? You know, as a marketer or someone who's trying to understand a demographic, there is like no more, there is like no better way to get information that's valuable than, use, than using this strategy. And I just don't even think people really know about it. Um, so then I asked it to rewrite the list into a super simple format. Um, and then I forgot to make it double spaced. So I asked it to double space it. And then now you can see that it put it all into a very simple list, which I then pasted into my little Figma. And now I am recording looms. So I've recorded three so far. I'm scheduling them to go out at 745 tomorrow. And the goal is to basically give, um, th give these clients a, you know, build out a brief, uh, custom website, which is under this black box that I, that's in my Figma. I'm going to make this window smaller. Um, and I also boiled a lot of my research into a bunch of key pain points. So these are the things that people are concerned about when, um, you know, looking for a dentist, these are the pain points that people really like want figured out before they go somewhere. These are the things that help uh, people choose. And so showing the customer, or sorry, showing our customers, the clients, the dentists, um, that we not only have all the tools and the abilities to gather tons of customer insights, but we're also basing the entire thing around these very common pain points, I think does a good job of showing that we are competent. You know, it's like, okay, it makes sense to an average person why this information would be critically important to build a website around. So um, I've done three looms so far to my most, um, ideal, uh, my, my most ideal prospect in my lead list. Um, I could probably be a little more efficient about this by sending them an email first, asking if they're interested and then recording the loom. But I was kind of having fun with it for a bit, recording these little videos. Um, I like to dig up the names of these people. And so if their name is, for example, like Dr. Gabriel or something, and they go by Dr. G, it says that on their website, you know, sometimes the, there's like little, there's like little clues. And then if in your email, you say like Dr. G, it's like subconsciously, there's a little bit of like familiarity there. It's like, okay, this isn't a random guy. This is like someone who like knows my nickname, you know, or I was very intentional about addressing things like that. Um, making sure that I'm not going over any kind of obvious opportunities to kind of build connection and look a little more like tapped in. I've sent three looms today. They, I'm just 
kind of bad at talking and the way I talk in these videos isn't always like the way I want to talk in the looms because I'm a little too like objective and I want to be a little more like fun but not unprofessional in the looms. It takes a while and I had to re-record all of them and then I recorded a perfect loom but then I realized on the mobile version of the website and the loom I had like a different dentist's name in it because I had like recorded the previous video and forgot to change it and so then I had to re-record it. This stuff just takes a while um, so I want a more fine-tuned way to do this and then I think in the future I don't think this is unreasonable I'm pretty sure I can have AI like screen websites because the problem with a lot of these websites that I'm that I'm finding that I'm able to address super easily is I go on them and there's like no easy call to action like when you go on a website you want a, you want a button where a person who's using their phone while driving can immediately like take action they can click like call now or book a book an appointment or whatever, if it's an e-commerce store like shop now or add to cart or whatever, like you want that to be like the easiest thing to do. And so I think I could hypothetically use AI to pretty much automate that entire task of finding websites to go on, going on websites, seeing where the call to actions are. And then if they're like super far down the page, which you'd be surprised, a lot of them are, add them to my little list and then do research about it. And then um, you know, I, I wouldn't want to AI generate the emails because like it's just so much better when it's personal. But I could even train, you know, Claude on my writing style. Um, for those who don't know, uh, you can you can clone your writing style with Claude very easily by using like 20 to 25 touch points. So um, if you have like different paragraphs that you've written for different reasons, combining all of those and making that your writing style is much better than giving it like one piece of your writing. So multiple touch points, um, super good. I don't see why I couldn't build a pretty much automated like lead gen thing for this once I have enough data. Um, Cause if I'm making, you know, if I'm sending a hundred emails, a hundred looms and I'm doing it all manually, like that's a lot of data for an LLM to work with. And I think if trained properly, it could do it very competently. So um, sorry for the long-winded rant. These are just things on my mind and you guys are my friends and so I'm talking to my friends. <laughs> um, appreciate you all for watching. It's day 11. That's what we're up to.